station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Happening now at 6, covering the entire DMV. A couple vanishes their ties to Northern Virginia and how three prison escapees are allegedly connected. And a stolen ambulance driver has been arrested. The new images from inside the front seat as police were led on a wild chase. And two years at war. How people living here at home continue to be impacted by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. A live report in the field. Plus, some earlier showers are moving on out this evening, and we'll have a chill across the region. We'll talk about how cold it gets tonight and what to expect for tomorrow's highs. Hey, good evening. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 6 this Saturday evening. I'm Ben Dennis. A bizarre international story with local ties. Police in the Eastern Caribbean say that they are trying to locate two people believed to be U.S. citizens who are on a boat that was hijacked by three escaped prisoners from Grenada. The Royal Grenada Police Force said in a statement they are working on leads that suggest the two occupants of the yacht may have been killed. The nonprofit Salty Dog Sailing Association has identified the boat's owners as Ralph Hendry and Kathy. Brandel. Family members tell us they lived in Falls Church, Virginia up until about 12 years ago. The association said that Hendry and Brandel had sailed the yacht in last year's Caribbean rally from Hampton, Virginia to Antigua and were spending the winter cruising in the Eastern Caribbean. Stay with us. Meanwhile, in the district, police say that they've arrested a man after a woman was found shot dead in a Northeast DC hotel room. Officials say it happened at the Ivy City Hotel on New York Avenue. When officers got there, they found the woman suffering from apparent physical trauma. She was pronounced dead there. Police are now charging 59 year old William Barrett of Northeast with first degree murder. Officials believe that Barrett and the suspect did know each other. Staying in the nation's capital, police say they've arrested a man in connection to a shooting that happened back in October that killed one man. Another hurt in Southeast. Officials got the call for the shooting at Halley Terrace around nine o'clock back on October the 30th. Once there, police found a man who had been shot, sent to the hospital in stable condition. Police say another victim took himself to a nearby hospital where he later died. 21-year-old Malik Thomas of D.C. is now being charged with first-degree murder while armed. And an update tonight on the man who allegedly stole an ambulance in Fairfax County. Get a load of this story here. Police say they have arrested 32-year-old Ricky Lowe of Manassas. He was also a passenger, we're told, in the stolen car that crashed after running from police near Route 50 and I-66 on February the 19th. While being treated at Innova Fairfax Hospital, Lowe left with an IV in his arm and stole that ambulance. Yesterday, police say they found Lowe near a hotel in Manassas where he was taken into custody. Happening right now, a rally of local Ukrainians and people protesting Russia's ongoing efforts in their invasion of that country. It's been two years since Russian troops had entered the Democratic nation. DC News Now's Dave Laval joins us live from where a crowd had gathered outside of the Russian ambassador to the U.S. in his residence. Dave, fill us in. Well, Ben, right now can tell you it's a lot quieter here as the demonstration wrapped up about 20 minutes ago. It was a massive turnout here as the crowd numbered at least 2,000 people. And at one point, you had a crowd that stretched nearly four blocks long that made its way up 16th Street. In fact, the crowd, you, you could see the line of people all the way from where we're standing right now all the way down 16th Street to the White House. All of this is the result of the war that started exactly two years ago tonight. Demonstrators marched here after their protest at the Lincoln Mo Memorial, where they once again condemned Russia's invasion. We got a chance to talk with several of the demonstrators, especially here in the area, who told us that, you know, it's been two years, but they're still committed to defeating Russia. Listen to, hear, to what they had to say. It's turned into a genocidal war. The missiles started dropping, the bombs started dropping, and that kind of terror was spread all over Ukraine. Ukraine cannot survive without help, especially military assistance, weapons. And it has been exactly two years. It's a war Ukrainians say they don't want, but they are committed to winning this and say if they have to be back here again next year, they will. We're live outside or in D.C. Dave Laval, D.C. News Now.
Well, not much needed forecast from Scott Sumner. Scott, mm. check it out. That's uh, parts of the district here in Northwest and Rosslyn off in the distance. Yeah, we have some uh, cloudy skies and we even have a few rain showers out there now moving through the district and surrounding <coughs> area. Uh, but those showers will not last long, maybe about an hour or so before moving on out. You can see them here uh, quite nicely moving uh, in from the west. There was even some snow shower activity out towards Garrett County. But as you notice, even Garrett County is cleared out of its cloud bank and now we're seeing some sunshine and clear skies out that way. But again, some light showers here this evening across the region. Now, with regards to the overall setup, we have a little bit of a weak impulse that's moving on through and move through this afternoon. It's moving through early this evening. We'll be out to sea early tonight and that will allow us to see some sunshine for tomorrow. But it is going to be a very chilly night ahead for us with those clearer skies. Expect temperatures down into the 20s. A sunny uh, Sunday, Monday turning a little milder and a strong storm will impact the area by Wednesday. We'll talk about the impacts of that storm coming up in my main forecast in just a few minutes. Ben. All right, Scott, thank you. Turning now, a Virginia-based aircraft carrier has been involved in several bombings in Yemen. The U.S. and the U.K. hitting 18 targets just earlier today, answering to a recent surge in attacks by the Iran-backed militia group known as Houthi rebels after they targeted ships in the Red Sea. Those fighter jets launched from the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower aircraft carrier. You see it right here. It's based in Norfolk, now in the Red Sea. Eisenhower previously was stationed in Norfolk before being deployed in October. According to U.S. officials, American and British fighter jets hit sites at eight locations, targeting missiles, launchers, rockets, drones, and air defense systems. The Washington, D.C. Travel and Adventure Show returned to the D.C. Convention Center in Northwest this weekend. That event presented people with thousands of travel options for those who are looking to plan their next vacation. Never too early, right? People who attended that rally also had the opportunity to meet face-to-face -face with travel experts and local business owners. There's travel content here by the dozens, and they're providing over 40 different sessions on how to travel better, safer, cheaper, and more efficiently. The amount of people who have walked up who have said, hey, I know about Loudoun County, but I've never visited. Tell me, what do you have? It's been amazing to have that face-to-face -face interaction. And an expanded pavilion dedicated to LGBTQ travel is new to this year's show. The pavilion showcases tourism brands and organizations providing trip planning inspiration, travel packages, and more. Over in Maryland, Montgomery County officials celebrated the grand opening of the Silver Spring Recreation and Aquatic Center just today. That new facility includes several pools, a gym, dance studios, and other multipurpose rooms. Those we spoke to say that the new facility creates a space for people in the community, of course, to come together. This is incredible for our community here in downtown Silver Spring to have something so close to where people live, work, and play. That's one of the reasons why I moved here, and I got in here early. I moved in six months ago, and I'm, I'm anticipating using the pool uh, hopefully three times a week. Getting plenty of swims in there. The new rec center will be open 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. through 5.30 in the evening on the weekends. And it's Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Across the U.S., 65% of teens experience psychological abuse while dating, and 19% deal with physical abuse in relationships. Right now, local advocates and law enforcement in Prince George's County are hoping to drive the numbers down. This Sunday, local business owners and local nonprofits will host an event called Find Your Voice. The goal, spread awareness on speaking up against abuse, help teens find mentors while releasing stress at home and the event will be held tomorrow at the Room of Rage from 4 to 6 p.m. You can visit our website, dcnewsnow.com, to register. More people in Montgomery County can now be eligible to get money back for security cameras when they join the county's police private security camera program. Police say the program was created to prevent and solve crimes. Artosa Vikile has more on who can be eligible and how to take part. Yeah, more people can get that rebate on security cameras because Montgomery County Police is increasing areas that can take part. Now, police say the police private security camera program encourages installing security cameras in areas that have relatively high crime. So let's show you those new additional areas and addresses within these areas are now eligible to take part in the program. That program started in November 2023. Police say any owner or tenant of a property used as a residence or business in the 
the eligible areas can apply for a rebate. Eligible security camera systems have to keep video footage for at least seven days and must be weatherproof. Police say the rebate is the cost of the camera and cannot exceed $250 and costs like installation and subscription will not be covered. Now some of the areas that are now eligible include parts of Rockville, Calverton, Burtonsville, Clarksburg and Gaithersburg. Police, people and businesses must register online and must buy and install the security cameras before applying for reimbursement. Police say you can get rebates for one camera per house or five per business or nonprofit organization. You can find more information on the program and the new areas that are eligible on our website, dcnewsnow.com. In the studio, I'm Tosin Vakile. Back to you. Our thanks to Tosin. Heads up for commuters. All Fairfax Connector bus service is suspended, suspended throughout this weekend as workers continue their strike over what they call unfair labor practices with contractor Transdev. Well, today is day three of the strike and the third day the bus service has been suspended. Hundreds of Fairfax Connector workers walked off the job Thursday out of those garages. Union leaders say that the workers have been working under expired contracts since December of 2023. The union says the first bargaining session began October the 13th. On November 30th, the current contract expired. December 19th, members voted to strike if necessary. Thursday was day one of that strike. We've been covering this since day one. Yesterday, we spoke with one Fairfax connector worker at that strike in Fairfax. How long do you plan to strike until you get what you believe you deserve? Uh, I feel I feel it should take how long how longer it takes till till Transdev learns what we're worth and what we need to be what needs to be done. Union leaders are asking for better retirement, more sick leave, better pay. In the statement to DC News Now, Transdev says it was disappointed over the decision to initiate a strike despite a generous offer. You can read more on Transdev's statement on our website, dcnewsnow.com. And attention for Metro riders. Well. Three red line stations will close between Van Ness and Medical Center in order to do track work this weekend. Closed stations are Bethesda, Friendship Heights, Tenley Town. Free shuttle buses will replace trains at those locations. On the Green Line, trains will be single tracking between Mount Vernon Square and U Street.